With around 100,000 specimens, the New Zealand Fungal and Plant Disease Collection is the world's foremost collection of New Zealand fungi. One of the few sizable collections of fungi in the Southern Hemisphere, it has national significance and is home not only to New Zealand specimens, but to those from Europe, North America, Australia and the Pacific. So the fungi of New Zealand are a really important group of organisms in New Zealand and they're a really major part of New Zealand's biodiversity that people often overlook. They don't actually realise how important fungi are in any ecosystem. Um, in New Zealand um, we think, well we presently know about 7,500 um, species of fungi. We think there are about three times that number present if we compare New Zealand with other countries which are better studied for their fungi. And the fungi themselves are such a, a, a different group of organisms. They are separate as a kingdom, they are separate from the animals and from the plants. The importance of the specimens held can't be overstated. The specimens substantiate records of fungi from New Zealand. So if we say that we have a particular fungus occurring in the country, we like to have a specimen to back up that record. And perhaps also more importantly, many of the specimens we have are of plant disease causing fungi. So these specimens substantiate records of plant diseases, both in New Zealand and in the Pacific. And this is important for when it comes to uh, quarantine and trade implications for the movement of agricultural products. A recent example of this is the reported scab on avocados. It was reported to occur in New Zealand by a New Zealand researcher. Uh, the record was published and the Australians eventually picked up on this record and said, hey, we don't have avocado scab, we are not going to accept your avocados because we do not want scab. Fortunately, the researcher had deposited specimens in the herbarium and he had also deposited living cultures in ICMP, our culture collection. In addition, we had specimens of the, fungi, of the fungus from North America and these specimens had been identified by the person who initially described the fungus. We were therefore able to carry out a close comparison of the New Zealand material and the North American material. We could see that the, the symptoms were somewhat different. The fungus also appeared somewhat different. And finally, other researchers were able to do uh, DNA extraction on the culture and this proved that the fungus was not the scab causing organism but was a more or less harmless secondary invader of avocado. And this shows just how important the taxonomy of fungi can be to help resolve such export trade issues. Began around 1920 by Gordon Cunningham, the fungal collection came under the auspices of Landcare Research in 1992, when the then DSIR became Crown Research Institutes. Held in a purpose-built facility, the collection is more than just dried specimens. These days it's become more and more important to grow the fungus. This usually means trying to isolate single spores of the fungus place those single spores onto agar and the fungus will then grow on the agar. These sort of cultures of fungi are nowadays used for extraction of DNA and for molecular phylogeny and identification of the fungi. Once we have the fungus on agar, we then hand it over to ICMP which is the International Collection of Microorganisms from Plants. This is the Land Care Fungal and Bacterial Culture Collection. The Fungal and Plant Disease Collection also holds specimens in trust for Pacific countries. The purpose-built facility is a safe place to store these important specimens, free from humidity and insect infestation. 
And as for New Zealand, the Pacific countries all have a published plant disease list, which is important to their increasing agricultural trade. So in addition to biosecurity and biodiversity documenting what we have in New Zealand in terms of fungi, another really important purpose of the collection is with regard to conservation of fungi. The Department of Conservation has almost 50 species of New Zealand fungi in the highest threat category. We have these rare fungi in our collection and from the collection information we can understand their host relationships, where they occur in New Zealand, when they have been collected and then go out and try to find more and learn more about these species and try to evaluate mechanisms whereby we can ensure their um, continued um, survival. Often they are confined to just one or two hosts that may be very limited in their distribution and we have to work with the Department of Conservation to try to safeguard those populations. <laughs>